Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Hardy. I am the Program Director for Planning and Performance Management um, here at AASHTO, and I want to thank you uh, for joining us today um, as we launch a brand new webinar series. Whoops. I have my, my instructions here, uh, so I'm going to try to read from those at the same time as I look at the camera. Um, so I, I apologize. I'll turn my light on here also. Um, so thanks to everybody. Uh, we are starting, uh, we're excited to be launching a brand new webinar mini series today focusing on transportation asset management tools. So this is our first installment in the mini series. Uh, for our topic today, we'll be looking at the AASHTO portals and the related tools that are available on the portal. So that's tam-portal.com. There will be a quiz at the end to make sure everybody has that uh, and remembers it. And we have three more uh, mini series webinars on the calendar. Our next meeting will be next Wednesday, April 27th, again at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Um, and that topic is gonna be on management systems. And if you wanna register for that uh, meeting, that webinar, or catch up on any of our past webinars, you can just visit, visit the TAM portal. Um, so, and if everybody together can say uh, tam-portal.com, click on TAM webinars under events in the main menu. And that's where you can register for all of the upcoming TAM tools, mini series meetings, and for the future TAM webinars as they are announced. You also find the archive for all of our previous webinars um, and you can go back, I think, uh, to 2012, I think, is when we had the first one. So uh, you can see a, a younger uh, Matt Hardy there. Um, I did that previously, and it's a little bit scary what happens over time. Um, so links to the videos uh, and slides from today's meeting will also be posted to that site. And of course, you'll also find many of the tools that we'll be looking at during today's webinar right there on the TAM portal. And finally, uh, for today, if you do have any questions um, during the webinar, please use the, the, uh, the, the Zoom meetings chat functionality, um, and you can type in your question and we'll all be able to see it. Um, and also at the end, we will have some time for some open discussions. And at that point, you are more than welcome to click on your camera, unmute yourself and ask your question that way. So we have moved this webinar over to the Zoom platform to hopefully allow for a lot more interaction. So please, you know, type in your questions, ask your questions at, um, towards the end, and we'd be happy to, um, to turn the mic over to you. Um, so for now, uh, I do wanna turn it over uh, to our co-sponsor FHWA, uh, but for the first time since 2012, when we, when we began the TAM webinar series, my collaborator and counterpart and webinar planning partner at Federal Highways, it's not Steve Gay. As many of you know, Steve retired back on April 2nd, um, and we do miss him, uh, but we are so thankful uh, that Tasha Clemens has uh, stepped up and is serving as the TAM lead for FHWA and acting as a great partner, just like Steve did. Uh, so with that, Tasha, I'll turn it over to you to give the FHWA welcome. Thank you, Matt. Uh, that was really great. <laughs> uh, FHWA is a proud sponsor of this special TAM webinar mini series and the TAM webinar series incorporated with ASHTO. Um, I am very proud to continue this and step in the Steve's shoes um, with all of us and you guys joining here today. Um, <clears throat> for our first mini series installment this week, we're going to jump right into the topic of the ASHTO TAM portal and other transportation management portals. On our agenda today, we'll hear from quite a few speakers who will share with us some of the great tools available on or from the portals. And I'm looking forward to hearing from many of you online who are using these tools to support strong asset management practices. As Matt mentioned, we've moved this webinar over to Zoom from our usual platform to allow for more interaction. And we're hoping that this interactive mini series format will really help all of us joining today to learn more from one another, as well as dig deeper into some great TAM tools. If you, <clears throat> I think you're going to enjoy today's session and I hope we'll all learn a lot this afternoon. Uh, finally, as Matt mentioned, the topic of next week's mini series will be management systems. And I really hope that everyone will be able to join us next week on the 27th. And so now I'll turn it over to Hyanna Park of Spy Pine Partners to cover our agenda and objectives for today. Thank you, Hyanna. 
Thanks, Tasha. So yes, as Tasha mentioned, I'm Hiana Park with SpyPom Partners, supporting ASHTO and FHWA on this webinar series. Okay, so I'll cover our objectives and agenda today and get us right into our presentations. The purpose of this installment of the TAM Tools webinar mini series is three part. First part, it's to raise awareness of the ASHTO portal, portals and the resources you can access. You're gonna find out today the wealth of, of tools as well as techniques and other types of resources that will help you implement TAM. Second, it's to understand um, the, the specifics of the tools available uh, on or from the portal. So we're gonna do a little bit of deep dives on some of them. And then finally, it's to hear from you we're looking forward to some great questions and suggestions and, and dialogue later today. For our agenda today, Matt Hardy will get us started with a tour of the Ashto portals. Um, he is going to be the chief tour guide today and, and, and then to highlight some of what's the resources that are there. Next, we'll have a series of brief demos and presentations spotlighting four of the tools available from the ASHTO portals. We'll take a look at the TPM benchmarking site with Mark Eggy from High Street Consulting, MODAT or the Multi-Objective Decision Analysis Tool with Bill Robert of SpyPom Partners. Then we'll have a tour of the new Regional Exchange Toolkit with Matt Hobrit of Iowa DOT. And finally, we'll take a look at MnDOT's TAM communication portal with Dave Solstrad from Minnesota DOT. Following the opening remarks, we'll have a dialogue with questions from you, our audience. Please do submit your comments or questions ahead of time using the chat feature uh, of the webinar control panel. You can do so that, um, do this at any time during today's presentation. And in response to the most frequently asked question, We'll make the slide the, the, and the video of today's um, webinar available after today's webinar at tam-portal.com. So before I turn it over to Matt, I do want to ask the audience to also put into the chat um, if you have any tools and techniques you're using in your organizations that you think is worth sharing just put it in the chat and I'll follow up with you for the, the future webinars. All right, let's, let's get started and I will turn it over to Matt. Great, thanks, Yana. Um, so I'm gonna start off, let me share my screen here. All right, um, so I always talk about, uh, so what I'm gonna run through are many of the portals that we have. Um, uh, one of them being the TAM portal, tam-portal.com. So you will see on your screen here, what you should be seeing is our, um, our, our hub, our AASHTO transportation management hub. And you can get to this by going to transportationmanagement.us. For me, that's a mouthful. Uh, so that's why I say tam-portal.com. It's a little easier for uh, me to say. But if you go to transportationmanagement.us, and Perry, if you could put that into the chat so people have it, that'd be great. Um, this is where you can access many of the portals that we're talking about, um, including the asset management portal in blue, uh, the performance management portal in turquoise, and then um, the enterprise risk management portal in this sort of yellowish uh, color. And we'll also be talking about uh, some supporting sites, uh, one of those being the, at the agency capability uh, building um, uh, portal. And, and that one's available at, at the bottom if you kind of zoom out a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but the one that we're gonna be sort of focusing on for today is the AASHTO Transportation Asset Management Portal. So you can go to transportationmanagement.us and click here, or you can just click on, believe it or not, or, or, or sorry, type in uh, tam-portal.com that you can see here. So this is the, the actual portal. I wanted to kind of go through a couple of the different resources and tools that we have here available to you. Um, it's all free. Um, I will say that a lot of this was has been paid for, number one, through NCHRP. Um, so uh, this started, uh, I want to say, six or seven years ago through uh, NCHRP uh, research effort. 
since that time, it is now being primarily supported through the AASHTO, um, or sorry, the, the Transportation Performance Management Pooled Fund effort that uh, Rhode Island DOT is, is the sponsor for. And uh, I've been talking about this a, a lot on various AASHTO uh, webinars. The Pooled Fund um, ends this year on December 31st. And we have initiated last, uh, it started on July 1st of 2021, a new AASHTO Transportation Performance Management Technical Service Program, which is going to basically take over the work and everything under the Pooled fund. So if you find the AASHTO TAM portal or our performance management portal, or the risk management portal, or any of the tools that we're going to be talking about useful to you, they were funded through the pooled fund. And if we want to keep those things alive and we, we want to keep them maintained and kind of updated, um, we, we need for states to please sign up uh, for the AASHTO Transportation Performance Management Technical Service Program. I've talked about it, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time today on it, but please be aware that that's how these types of resources and everything uh, get funded and, and how we uh, keep, uh, um, we can uh, maintain them. So the first one that I wanna mention, and I'm, I'm gonna be looking at my notes, so I apologize if I uh, uh, scroll down a little bit. I'm also gonna try to get my, Let me move my, sorry, I got to move my uh, Zoom navigation bar out of the way so I can access some things here. All right, sorry about that. So um, the first thing that I, I want to mention is one that we have been uh, responsive to, uh, to the state DOT. So um, it's under resources and it's called the TAMP form. And many of the uh, state DOTs, when the, when, the, uh, when the new TAMP, when the IIJA or the BIL, uh, uh, came out, there were some new requirements for the state DOTs to update their asset management plans from a uh, resilience and extreme weather uh, perspective. Um, so there was uh, a, a desire to have some sort of a forum where state DOTs could uh, get together, kind of chat and post different items um, about how they are developing or addressing those new requirements within the IIJA, given the guidance that has come out from FHWA. So we do have a form available um, to you. Uh, for right now, we are generally restricting this to uh, government sector people. So folks from FHWA, uh, folks from the state DOTs uh, will be able to post here. But the idea is that it's, a, it's sort of a safe space for state DOTs to kind of talk about updating their asset management plans. So we have the discussion form over here, and then we also have over here the ability for you to upload um, you know, sections of your uh, working TAMP, uh, that sort of thing, if you want folks to kind of comment on them, provide feed, feedback on them within the uh, TAMP community. So again, it's available to you. Um, if you want to access it, again, go to the TAMP portal, click on resources and cl click on TAMP form, and that's where you can access that. Um, the other thing to note, I meant to do this, is if you look at the landing page for the asset management portal up here, um, this is you know, the main navigation bar, uh, but just want to sort of make you aware that even the, the, the main page here, I can zoom out um, a little bit, you know, trying to highlight different resources that are currently available. Um, to you. So I, I know lots of states are in the process of updating their, their asset management plans. We have posted the, Cali the 2022 California TAMP, um, which I think is still posted for comment. It might be finalized. I can't remember. We, we might need to update that. Uh, but we are trying to post all those different TAMPs, and I'll show you where, where we're housing those. Um, so resources, up-to-date resources, uh, links to videos, um, some of the more recent tools, um, the events and everything going on. There's a, a pretty sophisticated search um, uh, uh, bar here. So if you want to search for all of the documents and our search functionality is not focused just on asset management, the asset management portal, but it covers the other portals, uh, portals as well, including performance management and the risk management. So we're searching and indexing all the files uh, within there. So um, at, the, at the risk, if I type in risk and I click in search, it's gonna uh, come up with documents, not just within the asset management um, um, air, um, uh, portal, but also uh, from the enterprise risk management as well, such as the transportation risk management guide um, and uh, uh, that sort of thing. So I think that's sort of a, a nice functionality there. Um, and then finally, at the, at the bottom, if you have a resource that you wanna share, uh, because sharing is caring, 
um, you can send that to me um, at Ashto and I can get it uploaded. Even better, we have the ability for you to just sort of type in your information, what that resource is, you can you know, uh, submit it, and then we get it and we can very quickly uh, make it available, kind of tag it and everything so that it becomes available uh, to, to, to others uh, via the portal. And then finally at the bottom, if you just wanna stay up to date uh, in terms of what's going on with this portal, scroll all the way down and you, you put in your first name, your last name and your email address, you sign up and we'll be able to send you um, automatically information that gets updated on a monthly basis in terms of what's going on with the asset management portal. So just quickly kind of what's going on there. Um, the other area, let me zoom in. I am getting old, so I had to make the font a little bit bigger. Um, just want to point out um, a couple other things uh, in terms of uh, un under the documents. Lots of different uh, opportunities here um, for you know, access to NCHRP research reports, other documents that are not related to N NCHRP. I did mention the TAMP. So if you click on documents to the TAMPs, and it'll come up, we have... Um, all of the asset management plans for all of the state DOTs um, identified here. So, uh, you know, all the way from Virginia to DC, to Puerto Rico, to Alaska, uh, to Hawaii, we, we, we have them all sort of cataloged here so that, you, so that you can access them. And also we've been maintaining uh, the TAMP certification dates. So if you're trying to figure out when any of the state DOTs have to recertify and kind of update their TAMPs, we have that information um, identified as well. Um, and then within the, the, the asset management plans, if you are looking for uh, a certain section, like um, you don't have time to read through all 52 of the asset management plans, you can search through different elements or aspects of the asset management plans. You know, give me all the, all the sections that, you know, the, that have bridges or, or discuss ITS or, you know, well, they all address pavement in some way. So we're trying to make it so that you can kind of go through and, and filter out, give me examples of other ones that are doing a data quality assessment or cross asset resource allocation. So you can kind of filter through and very quickly get access to those uh, documents and you know, learn something from them or you know, mirror them or you, you want an example of how another state did it, um, that's available to you there. Um, and then the, uh, the last thing under here that I kind of wanted to mention was the TAMP improvement resources. So the, this webinar is about you know, improving um, your asset management plan. So we've identified just some, some resources to very quickly, um, uh, you know, um, hot topic items, um, that sort of thing, as it pops up here. I wonder if there are a bunch of people on the, on the portal website right now, making it a little bit slow, uh, but uh, here they are. Um, so again, if you wanna look at, um, if you're trying to improve your agency uh, and from, from various aspects. So you wanna improve life cycle planning or you wanna improve upon risk management. We've tried to sort of catalog and, and filter those things, the, the, those items for you so that you know, it could be a training opportunity, it could be a document, could be examples, whatever. We've tried to make it easy for you to get access to those documents because sometimes you might just not know what you're looking for. And that's, that's the idea for the uh, improvement resources. Um, so there's that. And then some other things that I wanted to come up, uh, go over was the TAMP library. Uh, so we, the actual document library. Um, and this is where we, we, we are trying to catalog um, and just you know, make available as many different resources related to asset management as we can. Generally with respect to transportation, um, those that, that might be useful. And um, we, we do have uh, filters that you can very quickly filter through, but we have you know, over a thousand uh, different publications that, that we have tried to tag um, and, and make them easily findable and, and easily searchable uh, for you. And again, I mentioned that idea of, of going you know, cr across the different sites. So we do have, you, you can look for documents from the Enterprise Risk Management Portal and the Transportation Performance Management Portal as well, because the many documents at this point, um, uh, where we are in, in, in the industry, I would say, kind of overlap each other. You can't talk about risk really without talking about managing assets and managing assets about you know, the, 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 the broader category of, um, of uh, performance management. So those are just some, some sort of quick highlights in terms of what's available um, under the, uh, uh, the uh, resources area. So we have the, the, the TAMP forum, 
um, and then under documents, uh, uh, various aspects there. The next item that, that I wanted to go over was the TAM guide. So this is the, the AASHTO, um, uh, this is the web version of the AASHTO uh, Asset Management Implementation Guide. Uh, you can also buy a PDF version of this, uh, but um, when we, you know, put this project together, it was it was critical to kind of make it web-based as well, um, so that we could kind of easily update it. The other thing to note about the TAM guide is that it covers a lot of different topics. So we're talking breadth in terms of the topics that it covers. And this is the overall sort of framework um, that we talk about when it comes to um, asset management. Um, TAM strategy and planning, performance, monitoring and adjustment, resource allocation, and then bookend by the information and the systems, and then the organization and the people. Uh, what we started to do through our research effort, um, led by uh, William Johnson and the subcommittee on research within the broader uh, committee on performance-based management, is to identify different projects to go into a lot more depth, right? Um, so again, this is, you know, 400 pages. I meant to have my I'm looking around seeing if I have my hard copy, I don't have it here. Um, I meant to have that to, 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 to kind of show. Um, but uh, so we, we do have a number of projects, uh, NCHRP projects that are going into a lot more depth. Um, there are some that, are, that, that cross over asset and performance management, for example, target setting. We have two projects on how to make targets matter and then a, um, effective target setting approaches. Um, those those you know, cross over both asset management and performance management, but they're going to a lot more depth when it comes to setting targets um, uh, in, in, in terms of your you know, asset performance. Um, and one of the most recent ones um, is NCHRP 23-06, which is on system level asset valuation. And I forgot to put this into my... Um, this project is uh, being wrapped up now uh, through NCHRP. Um, and if you go to asset value guide, it's gonna come up here in a second. Um, this is that NCHRP project. And uh, again, another great, I think, example of the, 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 the TRB and AASHTO um, research or, or asset management committees working together for research, very practical. Um, implementable research pro uh, products. And then another good example of you know, the, the, the results of that project being implemented through the TAM portal and the existing TAM guide. So right now, so you can access the draft version of this if you're interested in sort of system level uh, at, you know, valuation of your transportation assets. You can get uh, access to all the chapters and everything right now. And eventually we are going to tie it, but it will be tied back to the actual TAM guide. So when, when we start talking about, um, uh, you know, life cycle planning or valuing assets, financial planning, that sort of thing, resource allocation, there are aspects that you will connect to this new guide. And we're going to try to make it as seamless as possible um, as we can. So uh, just another sort of great example, I think, of the uh, um, uh, partnerships uh, that we have. But that's not there yet. But if you do want a sort of a sneak peek um, uh, to the asset valuation guide, you can just click on assetvalueguide.com and it will, uh, it will take you to that resource and you can use it um, to your heart's content. All right. Um, and then just a, a couple other things, and then I'll turn it over uh, to, to, to Mark Eggy to, to uh, talk, uh, talk about our benchmarking website, um, is our training library. So we are trying to make available um, more training opportunities. Um, and, and we have started to document um, on the TAM, TAM portal uh, training opportunities uh, for you. So these are, it, it, it's a combination of any type of training that's kind of related touches on asset management. It could be web-based training, instructor-led training, as you'll see here. So we're just trying to give you access to them. Um, and this is one of the areas that we're trying to emphasize with, with the new Transportation Performance Management Technical Service Program are, are, are training resources. So we, we want to make more of these available to you, not just on the topic of asset management, but, but other areas um, as well. Uh, but this is one area that, 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 that we're trying to sort of, again, emphasize, focus on over the next year, uh, year and a half. But again, 
uh, if you click on resources and you click on trainings, you, you should be able to access all the different training opportunities that, that, that we've identified. Um, and some of these are web-based, some of them are um, more formal, less formal, uh, that sort of thing. All right, so that's, that, that, that's kind of the, uh, the, the current um, asset management portal. Um, the other one uh, that I didn't mention, but we talk a lot about is our TAM research management system. I don't have a lot of time to go in, into a lot of detail about this, but this is the tool that, that we are using to try to manage not just um, asset management research. Um, this was very successful, I think, over the past four or five years for helping us when it comes to identifying and kind of managing the, the uh, research process that we have for, uh, for, for developing research problem statements. We are at this time trying to make it broader and we're using it not just for asset management, but for other areas as well. So you can also access that asset management uh, portal as well. Um, and then what I wanna close out with are just some of the different other uh, portal uh, functionalities um, or um, uh, features. Uh, so again, I mentioned those three different portals that we have and that transportation management hub. If you're here on the TAM portal, you'll see this little bar up here. You can click and go back to the transportation management hub. That'll come up here in a minute. And then I will go uh, quickly go over to the TPM portal. So um, again, we have the, the, the three major portals. Um, and then, so let me click on the, um, the transportation uh, performance management portal. So that one is here again, same similar look and feel um, to the uh, asset management portal, um, slightly different sort of functionality. So you'll see up here, you know, resources, tools, events, community um, about. So this is similar to, to how the, uh, the, the TAM portal is set up. One thing that I, I want to point out um, is for the community. So we have tr under the TPM portal, we have tried to, you know, um, make the, the performance management community um, aware of all, you know, many of, not all of the, it's a strong word, uh, many of the different opportunities available to get involved with either ASHTO through the Committee on Performance-Based Management or TRB through the various um, asset management related um, uh, committees there. So if you click on community and go to CPBM, you can see all of our subcommittees, um, we can, you know, our, our coordinating work groups. So if you wanna get more information, if you wanna get involved, um, you can find out more information here. So specifically to asset management, you can click on it. And what will come up is a, a quick summary of what is the, the asset management subcommittee, who's in charge of it, Mount Auburn, um, and, and all that good stuff. How do I participate? Um, and that sort of thing. And we do need to update this. I just see now that, uh, that uh, Steve is, uh, we gotta put Tasha in there. Uh, so we will uh, get that updated. So that's the, um, our, our community aspect uh, to this. Um, there's, if, if you're interested in the whole lean process, we have an entire forum on uh, transportation lean that Gary Van Such from uh, Colorado DOT um, runs for us through our, sub, our Committee on Performance-Based Management Subcommittee on Organizational uh, Management. And then the last thing that I wanna highlight within our Transportation Management Hub is one of our supporting sites, which is the AASHTO Agency Capability um, uh, Building Portal, the ACB Portal. Let me click on this. This is one that's, you know, not not directly tied to asset management or performance management, but if you're if you're if you're looking at um, um, looking at the future capabilities of your transportation agency, uh, this is a resource uh, for you. This grew out of NCHRP project. Uh, it was a, it's, a, it's an, NCH, NCH, an NCHRP project. Um, so a lot of information here uh, for various levels within your organization. Um, if you're the information technology director, the CEO, a lead on knowledge management, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, again, lots of, of resources for you there. So I want to end my portion there. Um, I think we're going to do questions at the end. I, I'm happy to chat and everything with people. As I stop talking, I cannot talk and respond to chats at, at the same time. So I close those down. Um, but uh, that's sort of a quick overview of what our TAM portal is. Again, the answer to the quiz is tam-portal.com. Um, encourage you to go there. Um, and also, 
again, um, we can't do, you know, create these types of uh, resources uh, without funding. And the way we're doing that moving forward, uh, the committee on the Ashto Committee on Performance Based Management has their technical service program, which is being used to support in part uh, the overall uh, for, you know, maintenance and then further development um, of the, uh, not, not, not just the TAM portal, but all of the portals associated uh, with the transportation management.us hub. So with that, I'm going to stop and um, take a slight breather. But before I do that, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to introduce uh, Mark Eggy. Oh, by the way, I am your TAM tour guide for today. So as we go through, I have my little flag. So please follow me. It says TAM guide, um, and uh, we'll we'll take you through this uh, uh, webinar. Um, but with that, up next, and please uh, do watch out for other uh, visitors and stuff like that. Don't take up the entire sidewalk as we're doing our tour uh, down uh, the uh, TAM guide lane, uh, so to say. Uh, but with that, I am going to introduce uh, Mark Eggy. Um, so um, Mark is going to talk about the TPM. So from our, our sister, our brother, our sibling site um, the, on the TPM portal, uh, the TPM benchmarking site, uh, again, that is part of the Ashto TPM portal. And we're joined today by Mark Eggy from High Street Consulting, and he's uh, a transportation data scientist with High Street, and he will show us the site and some of the key features. And I will say, Mark, that we do have a plan in place to keep that site updated with new performance data. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, getting a project started that I just got funded uh, uh, to do that. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mark. Great. Well, thank, uh, thanks so much, Matt, for the, the kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. As, as Matt said, my name is Mark Eggy. I'm a data scientist with High Street and excited I mean, it's with Thanks to Matt's intro, I'm just I'm just blown away by the, the amount of resources that uh, that Ashto makes available um, for for managing performance for asset management. Um, I'm excited to get to share a little bit today uh, about a tool that High Street helped build with Spy, uh, Spy Pond a few years back uh, for for benchmarking as a as a tool in your performance management or asset management toolbox. So of course. Measuring performance is uh, an extremely useful input into the proce process of managing performance to be able to achieve your agency's desired outcomes. Um, but of course, the point of measuring isn't for its own sake, but rather to understand your performance and to be able to answer questions like, well, is, is, is our performance good? You know, if 63% if of your interstate pavements are in good condition, according to FHWA's performance measure definition, is, is that good? Um, and a great way to answer that type of question is, is through benchmarking. So of course you can, you can benchmark internally against your agency's own prior performance. You know, last year we were 62, this year 63, we're making progress, that seems good. But an even more powerful way to benchmark is to benchmark against your peers. If you improved by one point last year, but your peers all improved by three points, then that tells you something potentially different about your performance. So the Ashto Benchmarking Portal is a tool for facilitating um, that type of uh, that type of benchmarking. So it was originally developed through an NCHRP project. It's supported currently through the TPM Pooled Fund, um, and it includes uh, tools both for defining meaningful peer groups and then also doing the actual benchmarking. Uh, so I'm going to give just a brief demonstration uh, of how you can use the platform to benchmark your performance uh, or your asset management performance uh, against peers. So to access the, the portal, um, it's accessed off of the, uh, the TPM portal. Um, and it's one of the tools off of the TPM portal. You can also access it directly by just typing in benchmarking.tpm-portal.com. So there's, there's two core functions to the website, um, a peer selection or a, a function to develop uh, meaningful peer groups, and then a comparison function, which includes a number of performance measures, including all of the, the statewide FHWA TPM performance measures. So let's just uh, step through these in turn. Uh, and while this is loading, I'll mention that there, there's some legacy function on the site related to registration and logging in that was more pertinent to the, uh, the NCHRP study that originally funded this. Uh, and you don't need to register or create an account to access any of the, the functionality that I'll demonstrate today. 
So I'm, uh, I'm joining you live from uh, the great state of Montana today. Um, and so I'm going to, to give this demonstration from the perspective of the user at the agency, Montana Department of Transportation. You can choose your agency from the list. And so what I wanna do here is define a group of meaningful peers. So in this case, uh, I may choose to define a peer group based on states that have similar population and states that are similarly uh, similarly rural. Montana, Montana is a pretty rural state and I'm interested in comparing Montana's performance against other rural states. Um, we do have other attributes available here that you can use to kind of customize and define uh, the peer group that's more, most relevant for your particular type of analysis. Both these criteria selected, if we scroll down, um, we'll see a ranked list here of other state DOTs that based on the selected criteria are similar to, uh, to my agency. So let's go ahead and build out a peer group here. Let's bring in four peers. Um, we'll bring in four neighboring or uh, at least regionally close states, and we can go ahead and save that peer group and we're ready to go on and do some comparisons. So there's, uh, there's some, uh, some legacy or, or historic uh, benchmarking data available um, based on data sets that were commonly used for performance management or asset management prior to the introduction of FHWA's um, MAP21 fast acts performance measures, but that's really the, the, the current focus of the, the benchmarking platform is those measures. Um, so you'll see that we have the, the safety measures, the, the, the PM1 measures, the asset measures, and also the system performance measures here on the website. And it's the same information that you can get from FHWA's, uh, FHWA's dashboards, but presented to you in a, a format that's designed to facilitate benchmarking. So if we bring up the, the fatality rate performance measure, uh, on the chart here, we can see the four years of data that are available for the, the fatality rate performance measure um, and for the, uh, the selected peer groups here. Uh, the targets are also included here. I'm gonna turn off the targets because that just makes our uh, chart a little bit messy. Um, and we can see that Montana's performance relative to peer states, um, the, the fatality rate per 100 million DMT is, uh, is higher and elevated relative to other states, but the general trend is down. There's also a function in the, the portal here to be able to um, compare the uh, compare kind of the average uh, across all agencies. So this turns on the inner quartile range of performance scores for all 52 agencies that are part of the data set. Uh, we can see that uh, our peer groups are largely within that kind of inner quartile range uh, across all agencies. Um, and Montana's performance in terms of fatality rates is, is kind of an outlier. It's, it's well above what would be considered normal for other peers. From the, the comparison tab here, we also have access to, uh, to other measures. Um, so for example, we could come down and, uh, and look at the performance measure for, let's say the uh, percent of NHS bridges that are in good condition um, and view similar uh, comparison information. In this case, we only have two data points uh, that have been uh, collected and published to this point through FHWA's TPM process. But you can see, again, both the, um, both the performance and the, the targets that are set out there. Um, you can see, for example, that both uh, Montana and Wyoming have, uh, have set targets that um, in the future, their, their targets uh, indicate a lower level of performance in terms of NHS bridges in good condition. One final bit of functionality that I'll display here, if you'd like to be able to compare multiple performance measures, you can do that with the compare multiple button. And we can toggle on and compare multiple performance measures. So let's go ahead and grab our interstate payment performance and bridge performance. Uh, we'll bring in four measures, click compare, and this will let us quickly build out a table um, comparing, uh, comparing uh, my selected agency against the four peer groups. Uh, and it can quickly download a summary of these performance measures for a, a given uh, performance period or year. So that's what I had uh, to share with you uh, this uh, today. So again, the, the website, it's benchmarking.tpm-portal.com. And uh, as, uh, as additional information, um, as, as we continue down this, this TPM path through FHWA, uh, we'll be able to continue to keep this website up to date uh, with new, new data as it becomes available. And I think that this will just become an increasingly rich resource to be able to understand your agency's performance in the context of your peers' performance. 
Great, thank you, Mark. Um, again, tour guide here. Um, so just FYI for all the states that are here, um, we the the uh, the first reporting period uh, for the national performance management data um, has been you know it, it ended last year. Um, so we are gonna uh, the plan is to grab all that data, put it into the to the benchmarking website, make that um, available uh, to everyone, and you know do some some enhancements and everything. But that's future uh, future looking. So, but thanks, Mark. I think it's a it's a the, that's a great resource. So, if everybody would please follow me um, along the uh, sidewalk of the TAM uh, portal. Um, next up, we have Bill Robert uh, from SpyPond Partners. In my notes, it says my colleague at SpyPond Partners. I'm not sure what that um, that must be an error. Uh, but Bill is joining us today to share the multi-objective decision analysis tool or MODAT that's also available via the Ashto TPM portal. Uh, Bill is a vice president at SpyPond Partners and was instrumental in developing the MODAT tool. So he'll give us a brief demo. And again, please uh, tighten up the, the, the group and watch out for other people so they can get by on the sidewalk. So Bill, all yours. Thanks very much, Matt. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the multiple objective decision analysis tool or MODAT. Uh, to get to the tool from the TAM portal, you can go to the tools menu and uh, bring up the library. You'll see on the portal, there's actually a resource set for MODA, Multi-Objective Decision Analysis. And it's got a link to a training course that was developed recently, um, the link to MODAT, which we'll look at in just a sec. It's also got links to two NCHRP reports uh, on multiple objective decision analysis. An older report, Report 806, that um, gives a good introduction to the topic. And then the more recent report um, that SpyPond developed um, with High, High Street and others, uh, Report 921, um, it, which had was about case studies in cross-asset uh, multi-objective decision-making. It's really from that more recent research that MODAT uh, was, was developed. Um, so we developed it through the NCHRP effort and then Ashto picked it up and has uh, funded further enhancements to it. So from this site, you can get to the tool. Um, when you log into the system, um, you'll, you'll, you'll be led to this dashboard. I'll just very briefly walk through some of the key functionality of the tool. MODAT is really intended to help agencies support um, a, a process of multi-objective project prioritization. And uh, the idea is that you got a lot of assets, a lot of different objectives that you're trying to support. And there are a few different techniques for prioritizing um, across assets and objectives. Um, at the same time, it's very difficult to implement a multi-objective cross asset prioritization approach. It can be expensive. It can require a lot of data. So the tool is intended as a free resource for Ashto members to get started with, uh, with MODA and to experiment with their data and see what kind of results they get out of it. That's really the spirit of the tool. So when you go into the system, you get a dashboard and it gives you a summary of uh, what measures you've defined, what objectives have been developed, um, and then a set of projects. From there, you can configure the system um, so you can define uh, whoops, it's asking me to log in again. Okay, so from there you can define performance measures, you can define objectives here. We've just got four objectives defined, mobility, preservation, safety, and environment. Um, you can set weights on the different measures you can also set weights on the, on the objectives. Um, and there's also some functionality for uh, defining how the individual performance measures get scaled so that you can use them to capture progress towards your objectives. And that, that part gets kind of technical, so I won't spend too much time on it today. Um, then once you've got the system configured, you have to load project data. So you, you either enter or load um, through a CSV file, a set of projects, you specify the cost for each, and also the results in terms of the performance measures you've defined. Once you've um, set up your projects and the configuration, 
then you can prioritize. And the system uh, has a screen showing the prioritization results. And to, to run the system, you basically click the analyze button, you enter in a, um, a budget, and, and then you can prioritize using two different approaches. And so then you get back uh, a prioritized list showing um, you know, how each project performs with respect to the objectives, uh, a total score, a relative efficiency, which is sort of a prioritization factor and whether or not the project would be selected given the budget you specialize, specified. And then there's some visualization tools. So you can bring up the flow diagram where you see for each of the projects that were selected, um, let's say show only selected projects, how much did that project uh, shown on the left contribute to the objectives shown on the right. And you can see that a lot of the projects contribute to multiple objectives. They contribute to mobility, contribute to pre preservation, environment, and safety. At least that's how we've got the system defined now. There's also other um, uh, visualizations for showing kind of how the different projects scored and uh, helping provide some insights into the results. So um, that's a quick intro to the system. Uh, definitely encourage you to, to look at the resources on the TAM portal, uh, the training class, the INCHRP reports, and of course the tool. And um, if you are interested in using the system and you wanna see it populated with some test data, we'd be happy to help you out. With that, I'll turn it back over to our tour guide. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, thanks, Bill. Again, I think I did I did show some of those those training opportunities for the for the uh, uh, MoDAT tool. So um, you know, go look at it, and if if you run into problems, I'm sure Bill would be happy to kind of chat with you a little bit about it and kind of um, uh, show it to you and and see how it works. So thanks, Bill, for that, and thanks for the work, the great work on that. So again, uh, follow the tour guide here. We are going down Tam Guide Lane. Um, or route, I guess, bike lane, I don't know. Uh, but next up, we are a multimodal organization. Um, next up is uh, Matt Hobrick from the Iowa DOT. Um, and uh, we are gonna ha have sort of two state DOT examples of some resources that they've put together that I think some of the other state DOTs or any transportation agency, honestly, uh, might, be, uh, might find useful. So uh, Matt is the Transportation Asset Management Administrator I didn't know that at the Iowa DOT. I'm <laughs> laughing. Um, and he is also currently serves as the best chair um, of the Ashto Subcommittee on Asset Management and is also a member of the TRB Asset Management Committee. Best member? I don't know. Uh, but anyways, again, please bunch up, uh, watch out for other people, let them get by. And with that, Matt, I'll turn it over to you to talk about the um, um, I forget it's the, the, the resource exchange. I'm um, sorry, having, having okay. a brain fade there. That's fine. Yep. I probably need to update my bio too, because uh, uh, as of uh, uh, late last week, I have timed out of the uh, TRB asset management committee. So unfortunately, I have to take that off my, my uh, CV. But uh, he was proud. the best member of, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, anyway, um, I, uh, I'm very proud to have had the opportunity to serve on that group and uh, sad to, to, to have to depart, but uh, very excited for the new blood uh, going into that group and, and excited to, to see what direction they go in the future. So uh, thank you everyone for taking the time to be here today. Um, as Matt said, I'm the, the chair of the subcommittee on asset management. And so I'm um, really excited to, to see so many folks uh, participating in this uh, webinar today and um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the one of the tools in particular that we think are is going to be valuable or should be valuable for our community particularly as we're kind of coming out of uh, you know this uh, long uh, period of COVID and trying to kind of uh, find opportunities to connect with one another again um, and that is this regional exchange uh, toolbox that uh, was put together um, just a few years ago um, and uh, actually right before COVID sort of struck. And so we haven't had a lot of chance to, to exercise it, but hopefully uh, share with you some of the resources that are available in that toolbox today and give you an opportunity to uh, 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 give it a test drive and, and let us know how we can improve it. So uh, to find that, what you have to do is start at the TPM portal. 
uh, tpm-portal.com. And then if you go to tools and you drop down, hopefully you guys are all seeing my screen here, um, you'll see the regional exchange toolbox as like the fourth item down, fifth item down, depending on how you count. Um, so if you pull this up, um, what you're gonna see then is um, this text that describes a little bit about what the regional exchange toolbox is. And this is really an idea that kind of came out of uh, some uh, different exchange opportunities that I, I found extremely valuable um, early in uh, Iowa DOT's journey on developing our first TAMP back in about 2013. We uh, were fortunate to have um, a very supportive uh, Federal Highway uh, Division staff uh, at, in, in Iowa who suggested we use uh, some of the uh, T-squared funds available to kind of go on a little tour to some of the states that were uh, already producing TAMPs and learn some things from them. And out of that uh, kind of came this realization that uh, there's a real value in getting together kind of face-to-face -face and talking about some some issues that are, you know, you can do a little deeper dive than what we can do in maybe this kind of, kind of webinar format, which a uh, webinar is great, but, you know, there's that that opportunity to go a little deeper um, is so valuable. And so uh, that kind of led us to talking about the need for this type of a toolbox. And so let me kind of walk you through a few of the resources that are available here. And it really is intended to be uh, for any, group uh, we call it regional and you know the idea originally was maybe you know get a couple of states together that are close uh in proximity but it could be topical it doesn't have to be uh region based it is really for any type of uh of, of uh assemblage of agencies or or people uh to talk about a topic uh, or two that are of mutual interest so um in fact uh, if you kind of go into this uh this and you can expand out um, in this case, uh, you know, pre-planning, you can see various different documents. Um, let me let me pull up one of these. So if you wanted to think about, okay, we're we, we're interested in getting together, but we need to probably define our scope a little bit better. So we we can grab this uh, scoping document template, for example, uh, that will download um, here and should be downloaded now. I'm going to pop over into OneDrive where I saved it. I'll refresh that. I'll bring up the scoping document here. And hopefully you're still all seeing this. And then there's a template that you can use to fill in, you know, who, who is our audience? What uh, do we need to include? Um, list agencies and roles. Who's the sponsor, the lead? Um, some of the different issues that we're hoping to identify. Uh, what's in scope, out of scope, different assumptions. So this is a, a document that could be very useful in that planning process as we're thinking about uh, pulling together a group to talk about a topic that may be of interest. Um, then we have even uh, some additional resources that uh, are targeted towards virtual type events. Um, so, so a number of these documents are available from this toolkit. Um, we then uh, move from the planning into the real uh, pre-planning into more of the planning, um, getting together the agenda, sending out invitations, uh, tracking um, attendees, um, putting together sort of a run of show, presentation decks, uh, lots of different resources are available here. Um, and uh, you can see uh, we even have uh, indicated some special considerations for virtual events to, to consider. Um, so th this is all helping you kind of plan the event um, and, and really implement the event and have a successful event. So hopefully these tools are useful for that, uh, that phase. And then the post event, which uh, we is also a critical phase where we, we kind of have to think about how do we take the knowledge and really apply it uh, and, and the, the success of the event and really take it forward. Um, and maybe to think about uh, sharing that information with others, either within our organizations or in other organizations um, that we, we interface with. Um, and so this post event activities is really important to, you know, kind of provide that wrap up and, and that springboard for, um, you know, taking, taking the events into action. And then there's many, many uh, virtual uh, additional resources that are provided here, um, guides on uh, virtual events, some various summary reports that can give you a flavor of 
uh, so, sort of uh, how some of these events could be summarized, some different sample presentation decks, some best practices, um, guide guidance, uh, different websites uh, that, that focus on um, other kinds of uh, regional or, or peer exchange events. So these are uh, some different resources that are available. I would actually uh, encourage anyone who maybe has uh, participate in an event like this. If you have resources that you either have developed or uh, think would be valuable to share through this toolkit, please uh, let us know. Submit those. We have uh, uh, always have the opportunity uh, here at the at the bottom to um, to connect and and uh, submit your um, any of your ideas. Um, you can click on Add a Resource down here and um, submit those resources. Let you know indicate that it's what it's for and. And we would be very happy to, to add those resources uh, to, to this uh, toolkit. So hopefully this is uh, something that, that folks will find of value. Um, and uh, you know, uh, let us know if you have a successful event. Um, we'll be um, happy to, to try to find a way to support you if you need it um, in terms of uh, either uh, funding or resources um, or help you connect with those ideas. So um, thank you very much for your attention. And I'll turn it back over to Matt. Great. Thanks, Matt H. Um, <clears throat> um, so that's that was awesome. Um, again, all free stuff, right? Free information, free, free resources. Who doesn't like free? Um, I like free. So please go there and, and use it to your heart's desire. Uh, we are now on our TAM guideline. We're going to hang a right and we're going to go up to the great cold north uh, called Minnesota. Um, and we're going to visit, everybody should have on in the, we, we said, bring your parkas and everything uh, with you for our guide down TAM guide lane. So we're going to Minnesota. Um, we are lucky to have Dave Salzward uh, from the uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation with us uh, today, or us visiting him. Uh, Dave manages the asset management project office at Minnesota DOT. And he's joining us today to share uh, the MnDOT TAM communications portal which is sort of a customized module of the Ashto TAM portal. So again, that sharing is caring. Um, he kind of modeled uh, what they're doing after what, uh, what we did with, with, with Ashto. Um, and then MnDOT was able to adapt the Ashto TAM portal architecture to meet their needs for sharing TAM communications resources across the agency. And he led this effort and will share with us a brief overview of the process and the results. I know our tour is a little bit behind schedule, but that's okay. We can make up for it later. And again, please uh, close in, close in the, the, the group. Uh, the closer we get, the warmer that we're, we're going to stay uh, because we are in that cold, uh, cold uh, north of Minnesota. So Dave, with that, um, have at it. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um... I can start sharing my screen. It says I can add. There we go. Okay. Uh, start to share my screen here. If I can get the right one. One more try. Are you seeing enough? Um, we can see the triangle, the damn tools good. webinar. Huh? Yep. Like the title, is it the title, title slide? It looks like it, yes. Okay, all right. Well, thanks, Matt and everyone for having us. Um, what Matt talked about, Matt Hardy in the initial uh, tour of the, uh, of the tools, the portal tools uh, is very much the way this tool works. And what I'm really gonna show is sort of a practical application where we actually put it to use uh, in our Minnesota asset management program. So uh, we have, uh, what I'm showing here is actually a presentation that I do with our leadership uh, communities across the eight districts, usually about 100 people each, supervisors, practitioners. Uh, our charge for those folks is to explain asset management, build understanding of asset management, build uh, commitment of asset management. So this is really a very broad outreach effort across the districts. Uh, and through the uh, you know through the levels of, of practitioners within the district. So my slide here um, highlight the resource part of it, but it's really a three-part discussion we have with uh, with in the districts. So asset management strategic implementation plan. Now, this is a plan that Applied Pavement Technologies and SpyPon partners helped us with. 
to uh, develop long-term uh, goals and address some pending and important needs uh, in our asset management uh, implementation across the department. And so this fourth bullet here, there's five teams. This fourth bullet was asset management communications uh, specialty team. And that was a group of uh, district engineers, practitioners from various offices, communications and so on that really worked hard to uh, develop a uh, process that we could that we could implement to execute to uh, again to meet the communications need of the organizations. So think about asset management across an organization like a district um, uh, or actually the, you know the entire uh, the entire organization, we have a very broad range of stakeholders. Uh, which are hard to kind of shoehorn and a very broad range of uh, knowledge base to take. In our case, uh, frontline workers need to um, input uh, their efforts into the uh, asset management system, very technical and detailed. On the other end of the continuum, of course, is the leadership setting policy and direction. So that was one of the big challenges we faced. The pyramid kind of shows a way of uh, that, that team and the consultant um, arrived at to, uh, to put these in manageable baskets, you might say. Uh, and then the, uh, as I also mentioned, the continuum of knowledge needed, there is a, uh, you know, a, a parsing of sort of knowledge uh, categories that we try to share. So as I mentioned, you know, we start with the idea of going to these broad supervisory groups and literally asking them, meet with your staff help them understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. Uh, and so with that as, as an objective, uh, my team charged itself with providing them with materials because a lot of these people don't know much at all really about asset management. So we try to provide very consumer, consumable um, information pieces for them to use. And this is where the portal has come in. It's been uh, very useful in terms of being able to put information out there uh, accessible to our to our staff. One of the things I really like about it, we've got it posted as a page in uh, as a part of uh, our internal asset management page. Uh, nobody has to remember anything other than asset management, right? I want to teach my folks something about asset management. A uh, couple clicks at, on our internal pages, we can get to the communications portal, and in just um, you know a matter of you know minute someone can come these are the search uh, categories that Matt described early in his discussion uh, thumbnails show up for the different informational pieces that we have prepared um, we have in this case uh, for all these disciplines that occur in a, in a normal district really identified um, specific roles and responsibilities and bits of knowledge that they need to have for any of these individual uh, functions within a district and that's the emphasis of uh, of the portal here is to make that data easily available to the uh, you know supervisors and leaders who are charged with uh, with explaining them you know the concepts so and one other thing i was just going to show um, these are some of the examples that we have out there uh, i showed you those 10 or 12 different functional areas this is an example of a worksheet that some are uh, I call it one pager, <laughs> an informational piece that someone will have uh, if they click down the portal and, and use the information in the portal. So uh, a little bit of general. Uh, Dave, we're, we're only seeing your, your closing slide at this point. Uh oh, what do I have to do to get that to be better? Hmm. All right. Not sure how I can. You're probably either show, showing just a program or I'm not sure if you're showing which screen. Yeah, yeah, I might have been just sharing. Dave, that. you might want to just stop sharing and then reshare your other screen okay. that you, you probably want to show. Are you seeing a screen now? Not yet, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm about over. <laughs> I'm over time already. Maybe a, I can make hey, Perry, maybe can you share it, Perry? 
Yeah. So um, here, real quick, I'll try to I'll try to share uh, the the site, and we'll see if we can pull it up. Well, this is not that critical. I mean, people can go out to the site even actually and look at the at the examples we have out there. So yeah. So so we've got this is the MinDot uh, communication portal library, and I think uh, one of these sheets you know, that, that Dave was talking about would, would just be any of these resources that are available here. And then here's one of the handouts that you can pull up right from the site. I think this is, is Dave, is this a good representative? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I mean, it just, all I'm, I was trying to get at is we have a uh, pretty consumable piece of information that starts with general asset management information, sort of how it applies to you in this functional uh, role that this uh, is titled. And then at the very end, we've got an example typically of a number of roles and responsibilities that we really expect folks in their role within the district to you know, to follow. So that's as much as I wanted to, to share anyway. Thanks for the help on that, Barry. <laughs> Absolutely. I, th right. I think the other point that just um, is might be informative for the audience is that um, you know Matt and the the TPM leadership made the decision to um, make the the portal structure such that it's very easy to add another portal using the um, the existing portal infrastructure so that you can connect the pieces better because in the before each of the portals kind of came out of an NCHRP project independently. And so when that design was implemented for the portal, one of the things that it allowed was for an agency to, to use the portal inf infrastructure to much more instantly get um, a, an ability to to manage a process as well as share the, the content of what they're doing better. So what Dave is showing is that there's a process that was defined on how to communicate the, the plan, the asset management implement to action plan. And, um, and then as they were communicating, whether you're a district or someone from the central office, they're producing communication products and the site is helping to collect those resources and make it easily available to anybody who's part of this um, implementation. I will say it's easy to use too, as evidenced by, <laughs> by my competency in uh, technology, right? I, I post most of the things out there myself and I can get the mm -hmm. thumbnails. And so it's been, it's been very nice. So. All right, great. Thank you for that information, Dave, Hiana, Perry, with the support. Um, so uh, one thing that I, I, I did mention, and I'll just kind of briefly, let me just uh, share my screen here real quick. Not the portal, but um, I have shown this presentation before, uh, just talking about the TPM technical service program. So what Yana was talking about, what you know, mentioned at the very end that 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 Dave from from Minnesota was doing, um, we have within the new uh, TPM technical service program. So this is the what what the purpose of the TPM technical service program is. Those four things: we want to identify, develop, and deliver needed training, facilitate sharing, retention of performance management best practices, uh, develop tools and resources, and then provide access to specialty services experts and consultants related to performance management. And we have four broad areas, right? Asset management is one of those, including organizational management, risk management, and then system mobility. Um, so these, the a visual that says this portal and these uh, specific, the, the, the hub and the, the, the three portals are, 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 uh, are funded, you know, are, are maintained through the TSP, through the, through the pooled fund, and now the uh, technical service program. And um, so, Moving forward, this new TSP, 
Um, it's going to provide three core services, develop and deliver learning and, and capacity development resources, establish and maintain the TPM informa information clearinghouse, that transportation management.us hub, including the different portals, um, and then support knowledge transfer among member departments. And then we have access to optional services. So if your state DOT wants to take advantage of that, like Minnesota DOT, you can provide additional funding to get those sort of customized uh, portals, the, the customized service that um, any consultant really that we can get access to, um, we could, we could uh, use to kind of support you. And then from a costing standpoint, um, the core services, uh, th this is a, a typical AASHTO TSP cost is $15,000. Um, and then access to those optional services varies depending on what you want to get out of it. I don't want to spend any more time on this than that, but I am just trying to get the word out that the new TPM, the AASHTO Transportation Performance Management Technical Service Program is out there, um, and it's what's being used to support these portals. And we have a lot of flexibility in terms of the services that we can uh, uh, support you, our members, with. Um, so just want to make that sort of clear uh, to everybody as best I can. Um, with that, uh, Matt, do you have a question? Well, actually, I'd just like to kind of amplify one point there. Um, although this is an AASHTO activity and funded by the AASHTO Committee um, uh, uh, Technical Services Program, um, I don't want to give anybody the impression that we're only interested in highway stuff. Uh, this is definitely a multimodal effort. Uh, we are interested in resources uh, spanning all areas of transportation asset management. So don't think of this as uh, highway focused uh, just because it's, it's sort of uh, run and operated by AASHTO, we are really interested in, in pulling the full, the whole community together, supporting the entire community, uh, regardless of mode, uh, to uh, uh, participate and in, in find value in these resources and share resources that you have. Correct. Yeah, I'm. I teach a class, and I'm I, I'm mode agnostic is is what I say. So uh, whatever works for you, and we can support. Uh, but truly, I just echo what Matt said. This is this is a multimodal effort. Um, uh, what, 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 eh, what we're talking about here. Um, so we, th th that's the end of the formal sort of presentations. We do want to take any questions that you may have. And we do have a quick little Mentimeter, a couple, a, a few different Mentimeter questions to kind of get your feedback. So if you have any questions, please put those in the chat, uh, click on your camera, un unmute yourself and ask the question. I'm going to kind of bring over the, uh, the Mentimeter and kind of get that going um, as well to sort of help uh, with this too. Um, so here goes that. So um, again, if you have any questions, we have the chat. We have lots of people on the phone to support you. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, tour guide. So uh, we are coming back to the start of our of our tour um, down Tam Guide Lane. But you know, it, it's always important to get an, an, an evaluation of of your tour guide. Um, and uh, that sort of thing. So um, with that, uh, we've all used Menti before. Um, so if you go to menti.com and then type in the code 14254917, again, menti.com and use the code 14254917. Um, and the, the first question here, uh, we're not trying to, you know, figure out which one's best and which one's not as good. We're just trying to figure out, you know, for these kind of eight different items that we kind of talked about, some more depth than, than others, you know, for you personally, what do you think is uh, more useful? Uh, again, we're just trying to get the, you know, the um, seeing which way the air is blowing kind of thing or the, the, the uh, winds come. And so we'll take a few minutes to do that. We do have 56 people on, so hopefully we can get some get some good good useful resource uh, input here. And we are going to use this to uh, divide up the uh, all of the revenue that came in. So um, those that get well. <laughs> all right. So um, I started out with the, the the first four there, the TAMP forum. Um, the TAM guide, the state TAMP repository, and then that training library. Don't forget the TAMP form. It's fairly new. Um, so if, if you haven't been to it, please do um, encourage your, your colleagues and everything. Uh, again, it's a, it's a resource to you. And then uh, Mark Eggy talked about the TPM benchmarking tool. 
Um, uh, Bill Robert talked about the MoDAT tool. Uh, we had the regional exchange toolkit uh, from Matt and then uh, Dave Souls where it talked about the customized agency portals. That's about 20 people there. All right, the next two questions, just so you know, are open-ended and we are keeping an eye on the chat as well, but we haven't seen any questions come in really. I think we're leveling out here at 21, uh, which is fine. There's 22. All right, so that's, that's good, useful information for us. Uh, I'm gonna move on to our next question, which again is more open-ended. So what additional resources or tools, not and, that should be and or, um, would you like to see on our portals? What have, you know, in, in other words, what have, um, what are we missing in terms of resources and tools? It could be something I think at the very beginning, Hiana said, hey, in the chat, if you use any tools or resources, put them in the chat. Well, now put them here as well. Um, what are you using within your state that you think would be useful to, for us to share with others, if there are any? And then the, um, the last open-ended question is, is gonna be about what kind of enhancements would you wanna see? We got more focus about implementing the resources. Marad is developing an in-water structure asset management tool. The SAM, the SAM tool. Good practices for engaging local partners in the TAMP process. Frequently asked questions. That person might be aging themselves. I'm not sure my son would know what a frequently asked question is <laughs> from when I was in college and everything. <laughs> Valuation seems tricky. Looks like you have a start on it. So how agencies are using tools and techniques. Yeah. I'm not trying to highlight that one. I'm just trying to see it. <laughs> I can't read it all. All right, we got nine there. Give another 30 seconds or a few seconds here. Got that more practical examples of TAM implementation, benefit cost analysis, risk uh, quantification. Yeah. I will say that uh, from the RNI, the Research and Innovation Committee meeting that happened last week, uh, we got a really large uh, risk and resilience project funded at $4 million. They'll be developing a, a risk and resilience guide that transportation agencies uh, can use to better understand uh, risk and resilience. So looking forward to that one. All right. Life cycle cost analysis and extreme weather. All right. All right. So let's let's move on to the uh, last question here. These are all great, and you should be able to keep on typing, um, even though I I go to the uh, next one. So more about so that let me just bring this one up. Um, I'm not sure. It won't come up, but there was one here about. Asset management over here, asset management plans in extreme weather. There we go. So this one more about incorporating extreme weather and resilience into TAMPS. This has been a hot topic of the subcommittee on asset management. This is one reason why we uh, created that TAMP forum was so that you could kind of specifically talk about this kind of in a safe space. Um, so please, I'm not sure who, who made this or made the comment, please go go sign up for the, um, for the uh, TAMP forum and, and start posting some questions there. Um, that's, that, that's one of the main reasons why we created that, that forum for everybody. All right, thanks for that. And let's go on to our last question. Um, what other improvements to the TAM portal would you suggest? And this could be in the form of a user experience. Um, how do you navigate it? 
um, the speed of it. I mean, any, anything more technical as opposed to content. The other question was more content related. This is more, I would say on the, the, the technical end or something, some functionality, I guess, that that might be a, a better term. Short videos, yes. I, I'll make a joke and say, I think that person is also aging themselves <laughs> because my, the way my son learns, he's 17 now, it, is, it seems through YouTube, <laughs> a YouTube university. <laughs> I'm not sure if other parents have experienced that or not. <laughs> Dad, I watched this video on welding. <laughs> Okay. Is there a link between the TAMP portal and the NHI courses? That's a good question. I don't think the NHI courses specifically mention uh, the TAMP portal. Um, and I'm not sure how to get that updated, but I think that's a good point of as those courses get updated is to you know identify those various resources um, that would be available to them. And I think Katie Zimmerman from um, Aptech was helped develop the NHI course or delivered it. So sometimes if we can find the instructors who deliver the NHI courses, um, there is some, I think, opportunity for instructors to add some of their knowledge uh, to it. And we can ask them to do that. Hey, Perry, um, I know we did that training site on, for the TPM one. Can you just touch on that? It does, does that address that question? Uh, yeah, so we do have some MHI courses that are available as resources on the portal. I mean, links to basically to the site where you can log in. Um, but as those are updated pretty frequently, we don't have sort of an all encompassing index of relevant NHI courses. Oh, okay. Maybe I misread that question. So if, maybe if they're saying, are the courses available on the TAM portal? I think we've tried our best to identify them. If you click on it, then it should take you to the NHI website that you can then register. If it's a web-based course, you can then register for it. Um, or if it's an in-person uh, training, then you can you know, figure out how to do the in-person training. I should also mention, you know, the, there are other, other training available, not just through NHI. We do have the AASHTO uh, TC3 uh, course offerings, which, uh, you know, traditionally a lot of those have, uh, AASHTO offerings have been more kind of like technical. Uh, and, and so this has kind of been a nice expansion of the TC3 program to provide some of the, the courses in the uh, TPM and TAM uh, realm, uh, like uh, I think Bill mentioned in his comments about the the, the course on uh, the MODAT tool that's available through through Ashto TC3. So those are some uh, other training resources that are available beyond, beyond NHI. Yep. All right, uh, the, there was a question. It's kind of technical. Uh, I'm, Bill, if you're still on uh, from Michael Case about the MODAT tool, prioritization solutions of uh, discrete versus continuous. So. I'm not sure if you have, if you can respond to it, uh, respond to him, I think that'd be great. There we go, he did. Um, okay, any other, it's sort of what last opportunity, um, our tour uh, is coming to an end. I see some people are um, beginning to leave a little bit and that's, that's fine. We have other things that we have to do. Um, a site map needed. Looks like, yep, okay, good points. Um, so with that, um, I do have some closing uh, remarks. Don't forget to tip your tour guides. Uh, it's a big part. Um, so thank you to all the, uh, the uh, presenters today. So uh, Mark and Bill and Matt and, and Dave, I thought it was a um, excellent webinar, um, a good sort of Q&A dialogue, uh, Mentimeter polling, um, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, uh, thanks for all of that. We'll be back next week uh, with our, again, this is a sort of a get in, get out short, you know, sort of um, webinar mini, uh, what the TAM, what, TAM tools webinar mini series. That's a mouthful. Again, next week's topic is going to be on TAM management systems. 
Um, if, you, if you're on the webinar today, again, information here, uh, you can sign up for it at the tamportal.com. Again, tam-portal.com. Uh, and then the following webinar mini series episodes. So the mini series continues on Thursday, May 5th and then Thursday, May 12th. Again, all of these are at 2 p.m. Eastern. So we're trying to sort of pack them in to the next uh, three or four weeks. Um, and as always, please, if you have ideas or thoughts or topics um, on, uh, on webinars that, that, that you would like to hear more about, either something that you wanna share um, that your state is doing, uh, please let us know. We, we, we'd be happy to, to showcase you as uh, best we can. And one last reminder, for more information, you can always visit the Ashto TAM portal. And if everybody together, together can say that's tam-portal.com. Thank you, Matt, for uh, mouthing that. I, I appreciate that. Uh, with that, uh, thank you for being a great tour group. You, you are the best tour group ever, uh, I promise. Um, I'm not making that up. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay safe. We'll see you next uh, Wednesday at 2 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Matt.